I should. Okay, we are live. All right. Woo! <laughs> I am so excited. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. We actually wanted to do something like this back when I pretty much like COVID had just started. Like I think just it was for like April ish. Um, I think that's when it was. And uh, we were talking about maybe doing like some sort of live or podcast. And we we're like, we got to do something. <laughs> and we, we never did. But here we yeah. are. And it's yeah. been a long time coming, but we're making it happen. And I think it's actually going to be even more powerful for everyone watching anyway, because we've had some like kind of like collaboration between athletes that have come across your way that have come across my way and just seeing some different things and being able to observe a little bit more. So I'm super excited to introduce you guys to BJ from SFS Athletics. I'm going to let you share a little bit about what you do like where you are, all, all things about you. And then we'll dive into like the deep good stuff. Oh, wow. Put me on the spot. All right. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm BJ Johnson. I'm a uh, local swing coach. I, I, um, I, I say swing coach because it's a little bit different than what a uh, hitting instructor is. I think a hitting instructor kind of you know, focuses on just hitting a ball from a swing standpoint. We focus on the, the fundamentals of the swing, the science of the swing. Um, you know, I believe that the swing uh, dictates the hit. So good swing equals good hit, bad swing equals bad hit. So we focus on the process, not the outcome. So that's what basically a swing coach is. So, so I'm a swing coach uh, and uh, have a local facility here in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, we work with um, a lot of local girls. We also do virtual lessons as well. Uh, so we have, um, you know, tons of girls across the country as as well that we work with. That's why I'm here so early to, to, to do not only this, but to, to work on our uh, East Coast uh, virtual swings. But, um, uh, but all in all, I mean, listen, it's, uh, I, I, I'm not sure why God put me here, but um, I am here to train. Never did I think I'm gonna grow up and I'm gonna train athletes, right? I mean, that's not oh, yes. what I thought, right? <laughs> I'm gonna be a swing coach, that's what I'm gonna be, right? So. Uh, you, know, you never know why your journey takes you to where it, it takes you. Uh, but I think you just look up and say, this is where you want me to be. Okay, I'll, I'll be the best swing coach that you want me to be. Uh, mm -hmm. And I love what I do. So, um, so that's who I am. That's what I do. And, uh, and I'm loving it. Yeah. And I purposely brought BJ here because he's really good at what he does. I know like he might say that, but I'm going to like back him up because he's really, really good at what he does. And he's just like really inspired me as I've watched um, via social. We kind of, I kind of knew him through, through social and then we got to meet and then we finally got to meet in person. He actually gave me my own private lesson. And <laughs> that was really fun because I was really missing the game. And I was like, hey, can I come hit? And he's like, yeah, come on, like, come on over. Well, and he gave me a full on lesson and I like learned so much. And it was actually a great little like research or just like kind of getting back into, you know, what my girls are experiencing through lessons and learning and thinking through and like having to make all these adjustments. But besides that, BJ is amazing at what he does. And the thing that sticks out to me the most about you, BJ, from, from my perspective is that you understand your athletes on an, on, I, I feel like a hold up, a whole nother level than most coaches or um, private instructors and the content that you share on your social media just like really has resonated with me because of like the way that you're building your athletes up and your future athletes too <laughs> the ones that haven't even worked with you and just the message that you share with these girls and empowering them to be better athletes and better hitters or swingers <laughs> whatever we want to call them swingers hitters um so that's something that's really stuck out to me. And that's why I, I really wanted him to come on here and share with the parents in my group and um, in my, my platform, because we have such like a parallel message. And I just think that's really, really um, special for a coach to understand that and see that. So um, he's really good at what he does. So listen up. <laughs> um, so what do you, what do you think is, 
is making like what's different about the SFS way, which I am sure you'll talk a little bit about <clears throat> and your process and your lessons from like the other lessons out there, like your, cause I, I mean, I, I took some lessons. I didn't do a ton of lessons growing up, but um, I did do have some and, you know, it's like, we go, we hit a little bit. I think it kind of helped, but I just feel like you have something really unique and special over at SFS. So what makes, what do you feel like differentiates you from the rest? Mm, that's a good question. Um, well, SFS stands for stronger, faster, smarter. Um, you know, I, I, I end with a smarter piece because I believe in teaching athletes how to swing, not telling athletes how to swing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we were all athletes and um, we can all remember the times when coaches would tell us, do this, do that, ha, da, 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 right? And you're like, well, I, I think I am, but you keep yelling at me. I, I, I think I'm doing that, right? And so when I started teaching, um, I approached it from a teaching aspect versus a telling aspect. And so with the smarter piece, um, we have, um, you know, I, and, and this didn't just happen, right? I mean, I've had to develop this, this SFS way over mm -hmm. you know, the last six years on how we're teaching athletes how to swing. And you know, uh, I also think that people can, can teach at a very high level and speak above their students. And what I think I've done is, is come up with a way to speak directly to the demographic um, that's, that's coming into the SFS facility. So, mm -hmm. um, so we, we have simplified the, the hitting or swing process. Um, we keep on, um, we, we, we hammer on each one of our athletes to learn the definitions. Um, if you come into the facility, you'll, you'll hear, what does that mean? What does that mean? What's the definition of, um, you know, what happens if we do X? And so, um, and that's why you don't just come in here and take 5,000 hits. You're going to, you're going to learn the swing. You're going to understand the swing and you're going to be able to speak swing. Mm -hmm. um, so we call it the, the, the swing language. And so, um, you know, if you see anybody walking around with an SFS shirt, you know, you can talk to them about what their swing philosophy is and hopefully they can speak swing to you. And if they don't, then that's a reflection of me and I suck. But, uh, but if they, if they are able to speak swing, um, you'll know that they're understanding the process on what they're trying to do. Yeah. So, uh, so what separates SFS from everybody else is I think we teach versus tell mm -hmm. and we have a process. Um, and, uh, and, and each student is held accountable for understanding that process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, actually the first thing that kind of, um, came up for me is when I did have my, my awesome private lesson and got back into the swing of things, no pun intended. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I remember you specifically, um, when you were teaching me some different things, yeah, I was learning new things. I, you know, I also have it swung the bat and like, a long time but um <laughs> when you were teaching me or having me repeat or not repeat you were having me finish your sentences mm -hmm. um which is something i picked up that you probably do a lot with the mm -hmm. girls that you're teaching mm -hmm. um and it made me have to actually think about what i was doing and actually understanding that language so i, I picked up on that little uh, little tidbit of your your mm -hmm. teaching Mm -hmm. um the, the just the way that you teach in in the cage i thought that was really right. was, um pretty cool and something i remembered i mean because uh, here's here's uh, sorry to cut you no, go I ahead. Mean, here, here, here's i mean here's the honest truth i mean you're 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 in here for an hour you're in here for an hour mm -hmm. so and some kids come in here multiple times a week some are here once a week so if you're a once a week student and all we do is focus on hit 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 right um and not learning you're not, I, I feel that you're, the hour that you're in here, your job is to learn. Mm -hmm. And so we're gonna swing, we're gonna break it down, we're gonna do video analysis, we're gonna stop, we're gonna learn, we're gonna do video analysis, we're gonna see what your swing does. And so as we're doing this, you're learning because mm -hmm. when you walk out of here, I gotta make sure that you're prepared when you walk out of these four walls. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. at the end of the day, you are an SFS billboard. 
Mm -hmm. And so I want you to be able to swing, uh, uh, speak swing. I want you to be able to swing the right way, have the right approach, have the right mindset. Uh, and so these are all the things that we focus on while you're in here. Yeah. I think too, one of the things that um, just from listening to you, watching you, following you, I've really started to realize, which I didn't realize when I was playing and I was younger, that a lesson in private lessons is for learning. And then your training is outside. If that like, you're actually practicing getting the reps in aside from the lesson. And it Absolutely. finally kind of clicked for me. Like I didn't, I didn't really like quite understand there. I wasn't seeing it very clearly until recently, which is kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with what I do is like, I'm teaching these girls, these different mindset tools, like visualization and self-talk. And like, I can tell them all day long, but if they don't go and practice it, just like they don't go and practice the things that they've learned in the cage with you there, it's, it's not going to get better. <laughs> all Listen, right? I, I, I know, I know a page, I know a page <laughs> athlete when I'm in here swinging with somebody and then they step out and then they do their visualization. <laughs> and I'm like, what's going on? What, what is she doing? It's like Yoda in there. <laughs> you got little Yodas in your cage. That's right, that's right. Oh so, yeah. uh, I mean, even, even in the lobby area, um, I see uh, your athletes visualizing before they even walk into you know, the training area. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I, I mean, I, I even go to the field and I see your athletes visualizing before a game or in between innings. I mean, mm -hmm. I see it, um, you know, and I know a lot of your athletes, so I know what they're doing now. So I, I go, <laughs> okay, I, okay, I'm, I'm a step away. I see, I see. So, mm -hmm. uh, so no, it's, it's fun to see what you're doing as well. Yeah. So cool. Well, um, I guess we can just kind of jump right into that because, it's been really neat over the last, I don't know, probably over a little bit over six months now, at least where we're like, Oh, like we have the same athlete. She's going to you and she's uh, also coming to me. And so we have these overlapping athletes and it's been really neat to see their success. Just like jump. I feel like yeah. that they have this this little edge and you've sent me messages. <laughs> like I actually shared that message in this group about, <laughs> about the parent coming up uh -huh. to me like, you know, like my daughter is doing so well. And you're like, I'm ready for this, this thank you. And, and you're like, yeah, I'm paid. she's amazing. Thanks for <laughs> that was like totally made my day. Oh my but it really is like, we've, it's been really cool because I feel like we're like this team, even though we don't really like, you know, meet every week or anything. We're not like an actual team, which we might be eventually, but um, mm -hmm. it's like really need to see how we've kind of created this like collaboration, this team. And when, you know, girls go to both of us, how it, it creates something really special. And they have this, this different edge that I think that other athletes might not understand or know yet um until they they put the mindset and the physical work together but which also you know why I love what you do is because you do you appreciate the mindset and you are and you were just telling me um before we actually hopped on this is you want to be able to prepare these girls for um having a mindset like having a mindset to hit and and to swing not only just simply the physical work. So I think yeah. that there's, we have something really special and unique. And I, um, I, I want to be able to create that with more private instructors. Like, you know, we, we both know Erin White and she does the catchers and we've been able to collaborate on some stuff too. And I think that there's, you know, she's always like, there's a difference when they under, like when they're working on you know what's going on in their mind. So yeah. Um, yeah. like, where did you, uh, what's like, where, where did you learn or like, how did you know that this mindset piece was something that you need, you wanted in your, in your, your way of teaching? Yeah. You know, um, this has just the evolution of what's happened, you know, from, um, from my time being an instructor, um, 
you know, I, I was, I was all about, you know, I, when I first started, I was just hit, 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 hit. Right. And then I had a, uh, a big time college coach call me. Um, and he says, man, you are developing college ready swings. And I immediately wrote that down. Like, I was like, Ooh, Oh that's... my God. I was like, that's a good one. So I started adopting the, we develop college ready swings, um, um, tagline on all of our stuff. Cause I said, man, I said, if, if this particular coach who attends the women's college world series on a consistent basis is telling me that I'm developing college ready swings and he wants to send his athletes to me to vet, I'm developing college ready swings. So I started that, that whole college ready swing. But as I started getting these college ready swings, I, I, I also thought, okay, now they're getting ready for college, right? Okay, because they're kind of, you know, here at 13, 14, getting here for, you know, 15, 16, 17, 18, I'm about to send them off. Mm -hmm. So not only do they need a college ready swing, but they need a college ready mindset. Mm -hmm. And so we talk about getting prepared, what it means to be prepared in the box, what it means to be prepared in certain counts, how to be an effective two strike hitter, how to be uh, an effective um, game winning hitter, how to be an effective uh, hitter on a field that you're not familiar playing on, right? So there's all these, you know, mindsets that you need to be prepared for. And that's where I said, and I keep on, uh, um, you know, suggesting everybody goes to you as well, because I'm, you may not know, I know I'm pretty, but I am not a woman. And so as a, I'm a girl dad, but I'm not a woman. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. at, my mind is real simple. I'm eh, whatever, right? I, I, I mean, I feel, and there's some um, women's minds that are very simple, but I think your brain is so detailed and focused and pay attention to detail. And sometimes you overanalyze certain situations. And so, so my mind doesn't think that way. I'm like, look, it, it is what it is. Get up, let's go, come on. And, um, and, and I think that I'm not prepared to teach that woman's mindset to a woman because I'm not a woman. And so I think the, the mindset of a woman needs to be taught by a woman. And mm -hmm. so I can teach you how to swing, mm -hmm. but the way that you're thinking has to come somewhere else. Now I do a lot of motivation because yeah. I am a girl dad and I want my girls to know it's not a matter of if, but when you're gonna be faced in a situation where you need to make sure that that man does not intimidate you. Mm -hmm. And you're not intimidated mm -hmm. just based on your sex, mm -hmm. right? And so, um, so I try to prepare not only my daughters, but other female athletes that I train to be prepared in certain situations. But that still doesn't mean I understand the mindset. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, and totally. so and, and so um, it's kind of like, um, yeah, anyway, I won't go on there. But, but I think that that's where you are so important in this game and to our athletes. Mm -hmm. And I think there's different stages of, of, of the, the athletes um, uh, game where maybe 14 and under the mindset is thinking this mm -hmm. 14 and above the mindset is thinking something else. There's a lot more distractions, right? I mean, high school boys, um, high school boys right i mean <laughs> can we repeat that high school okay and then add in the whole recruiting like the recruiting yes, factor. yes, yes, yes it's like, right holy crap so ex ex so so there's a lot of distractions that can take place and you got to understand how to get refocused and understand what your long-term mm -hmm. uh objectives are and don't get caught up in short-term mm -hmm. pleasures yeah i think something that that makes us so powerful together is that you understand that about the female athlete, which is why I appreciate you so much. And like, but we're also reiterating the same things and, but you're also patient with them because mm -hmm. sometimes we do overthink everything and it's because mm -hmm. I don't know why, but like, you know, we want to be so good and we want to do everything right. That when it doesn't happen, it's like the world is falling apart. So mm -hmm. we have to that's where I feel like I come in and I 
we're like really strengthening those parts and understanding that failure isn't a bad thing and just shifting the way that we think about stuff so that when they do come in and they're learning with you that they're like, oh, like I sucked at that. Oh, well, like there's just feedback, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just this constant, like going back and forth between the two of us, or if you're, you're working on your mindset and you're working on your, your swing or your learning and part of the game, like pieces of the game, that's when things like start to really make sense. Sorry, it went oh, to uh, somebody <laughs> called me. I put you on my phone versus my computer. <laughs> um, but I think that's what that makes uh, like us so powerful together. And it's funny, I uh, uh, when you were talking about the the female brain and our mindsets, uh, Robbie Moseris liked it. Or like right when you said it, I was like, yes, she knows. <laughs> He's getting be a little tawny. Um, uh -huh. But no, I just I I I love. I love getting to see like when you highlight the girls on your social that I see are working with me. It's just so cool. And it's really cool to like get to like, you know, we're working kind of shoulder to shoulder on this. You know, um, I mean, it's fr from my standpoint, it's exciting to see the transformation. Um, you know, and, and I say that as much as I want to beat my chest and say, yes, they're swinging well. Um, yes, they have a good swing, but um, they could have that same swing with a bad mindset and it just doesn't work, mm -hmm. right? And so, um, and I've seen some athletes that have had a very poor mindset with a very good swing mm -hmm. and it just not clicked. But once they were able to fit, once they were able to have a good swing and a good mindset, that then makes them a whole lot better athlete. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, this this softball thing has an expiration date, mm -hmm. right? So we aren't trying to prepare them for softball. We're really preparing them for life, mm -hmm. how to overcome adversity, how to, you know, um, you know, how to um, understand how to um, um, overcome negative thoughts and, 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 and be prepared when they, they know they're facing tough competition, whether it's in a boardroom or whether it's, you know, with family. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, and so these mindsets that you're teaching them, you know, I'm teaching them how to be good and strong. Right. You're teaching them. OK, now you're good, strong with a good mindset. Now, that's that's a whole lot bigger than just having a great swing. Yeah, totally. So good. Um, and and oh. here's and sorry. Sorry, I want to say this. Too. No, you're good. Um, I, I stole I stole I stole this from my buddy, Matt Palmer. Um, we were in uh, Matt um, we you know, you know, Matt. <laughs> Yeah. You know that? Oh, so, okay. So I don't know if he told you this or not, but I, I stole this when we were at our, um, we have a little uh, men's group that we, um, um, that we attend. And he was talking about the effects of ADD today. Uh -huh. And, but what his ADD stood for was attention desire disorder. And so I'll say that again, attention desire disorder. And this is why I think a lot of people are struggling with um, the, the need for success so quick is because social media has put us in a position where as soon as we post something, we're looking, we're, we're looking to make sure that we're, we're getting 500 likes and 5,000 views and you know everything's coming. And so what this attention desire disorder is doing is it's it's making our athletes desire um, immediate, mm, um, uh, I guess, um, mm -hmm. gratification, and that's not what this does. Mm -hmm. And that's the hard part about this game because if you're looking for immediate gratification, you're going to struggle. Mm -hmm. You're going to struggle. I use this um, analogy with all of our athletes. I I say, okay, so who's been in science class? and has planted a seed in soil. Mm -hmm. And you know, they go, I have, I have, okay. I said, okay, so, so you put the seed in the soil and then you put some water on it, correct? And they go, yes, I go, and then how quick did that seed grow? Well, it took a while, exactly. Mm -hmm. You're the seed, you're the seed. And I'm just trying to put some water on you. And so it's going to take image. 
right? I mean, it's yeah. it's going it's so it's going to take some time mm -hmm. for this process to develop, and mm -hmm. it's almost as if we have to train the parents as well because the parents are the ones who sorry parents you guys are the ones and listen i'm the parent too i was and if anybody i'm so glad there wasn't cameras around and maybe there were when i started out i mean i was the worst with my daughters i mean i was you gotta do it she's like well i still got boogers running down my nose and i don't know what i'm doing right <laughs> and she, and, and, but the expectation is is that she's an all-american at eight nine mm -hmm. years old Right. Mm -hmm. And then as I started getting older, I started watching my kids grow. And I was like, man, you're pretty good, man. You're, you're pretty good. And I was like, why was I such a dumb butt at, um, you know, when you guys were young, I just, I, I, it was almost as if I was the one that was playing, not you. And I wanted to be good. Mm -hmm. I, I, it, it's like, and then when I looked at myself, I wasn't good at 9, 10, 11, 12 years old. I was still doing dirt angels in the infield, right? When I was 11, 12 years old. And, and now we're expecting these girls at 11, 12 years old to be all American. And yeah. so that's where my, my mindset as both a parent and an instructor. Sorry, I have a leaky eye this morning. Um, <laughs> sorry, you're, um, crying. you're just so happy. I'm crying, yeah. Um, you know, so that's where my mindset has has changed. Um, I know I have uh, one, another thing, and you can't tell, I'm a little loud, right? Um, one thing I also learned is being loud is a characteristic, it's not a skill set. Mm -hmm. And so I tried to change, when I first started, I tried to change all of my athletes, like, you gotta be loud, you gotta be raw, right? And I used to have these quiet girls come in here right. and they'd look at me, whoa, who is this crazy guy, right? I'm doing that. And, <laughs> but over the years, their swing just started getting so good. And I was like, man, these girls are phenomenal. I was like, you gotta get loud. And they're like, I'm still not loud, right? Yeah. And then what I realized is being loud is a characteristic, it's not a mm -hmm. skill set. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, you telling me, BJ, you gotta be quiet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? I couldn't do it, right? I couldn't be quiet for a long time. So yeah. what I had to realize is, um, you know, being quiet is a skill set, not a character, uh, um, is a is a characteristic, not a skill set. Mm -hmm. So uh, so as a parent, again, I just want to give those words of advice. Let your kid develop their skill. Don't worry about their um, um, their characteristics because they're going to continue to develop their characteristics as they go. But mm -hmm. um, anyway, I don't know how I went off yeah. on that. Tangent, <clears throat> I but. call it I call it the like my the more shy girls, which there's a lot of girls, like, especially when I talked to parents originally, they're like, she's so shy. I don't know if she's going to say anything. I'm like, it's okay. Mm -hmm, and you know, mm -hmm. I, I reiterate to those girls that I know are more, a little bit more reserved or that they, that I call it their quiet confidence. Mm -hmm. And there are some players that I've watched and seen at the college level and the professional level. They're just, they've just got this like quiet confidence. And I'm like, that's mm -hmm. okay too. You can be loud and and like BJ and like have that kind of confidence, but you can also have that quiet confidence, like, like silent assassins. <laughs> but is, isn't it also true being quiet, the quiet, the quieter you are, the more you listen? Mm -hmm. Right? I yeah, mean, they're and, like and it, taking it all in. They're taking it all in, right? Where I'm looking to think, I'm thinking about what I'm going to say next versus mm -hmm. taking everything you're saying in. Yeah, letting it sink in. Yeah, the other thing too that before I forget, you were talking about the parents um, and giving some advice to the parents and just talking about your own experience and journey and how, um, you know, you you like wanted it so bad for your girls. You're like, we're going to be all Americans. It's like almost the same. Like, I know parents are like, well, why doesn't she, you know, why doesn't she like think that about herself or why doesn't she get that? Like, I know a lot of parents are like, I wish that she could just see how good she is instead of like, you know, always being hard on herself. So it's like literally the same thing that's happening in like the parents' mindset that's happening in the athlete's mindset is mm -hmm. we want it so bad. We want to be good so bad that sometimes it totally just blocks us from our, our, um, our potential. 
like we're being our own worst enemy and yeah. both of those situations like the parents being the enemy when they're doing that and they're like ah like you could like do this do that do that <laughs> right they're like mm -hmm. they're just so passionate that it comes off like not in a great way right and the right. same thing that happens with the girls they're so passionate that they just beat themselves down instead of seeing you know both sides and having more of that balance of okay I'm doing these things really, really well. Here are some things that I need to work on too. Instead of only looking at, oh, I'm not good at this or I need to work on this. It's having that, it's like having that balance and like ebbing and flowing between the two. And I think that's, that's really, it was really interesting when you said, I'm like, oh my gosh, the parents and the girls have the same mindset and they don't even know it. <laughs> you know, I, I use this analogy with all the parents that come in here. The majority of them, I talk about it. Um, I use my popcorn analogy. Have I have I talked to you about my popcorn analogy? I don't think so. No. So uh, so you you back you you popped a bag of popcorn in a microwave. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what you did is you ripped the bag open. You set the bag on the tray in the microwave. You hit minute thirty, and then you hit start. Right. Uh huh. Okay. So now, <clears throat> so you know you're waiting. You're waiting, and at about thirty seconds, what happens? Starts to pop. Did all of them pop at 30 seconds? No. You got to wait but they for were all... the last one pops. <laughs> so 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 here's 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 my here's my point is at 30 seconds one or two began to pop. Yeah. But they were all under the same heat. They all had the same amount of butter, all had the same amount of salt, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. But only a couple of them popped at 30 seconds. Yeah. And then and then all of a sudden a couple more pop pop pop. Mm -hmm. Pop 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 pop. pop. And then a minute 30 ends. Now you got this bag of popcorn. Mm -hmm. So here's my point. Why didn't they all pop at the 30 second mark? Mm, sounds scientific. I'm not really sure. I'm not either. And so I say that about athletes as well. I don't know why some develop at the 30 second mark and yeah. some take longer than the others. Mm -hmm. so They're different sounds. kinds of plants. But <laughs> <laughs> but but my point is eventually they all pop mm -hmm. now, let's be honest some don't because mm -hmm. there are some kernels that are still left at the end of the of the time frame that mm -hmm. haven't popped mm -hmm. and so my my analogy means there's going to be some girls that are popping early mm -hmm. okay don't compare yourself to the one that popped early because let's 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 even go deeper than this because the ones that popped in the beginning might end up even being burnt at the end of the minute 30. Oh, this is good. So, so, so let me get this right. Some yeah. popped early, some late, and uh -huh. then some got burnt, and then some didn't even pop. Mm -hmm. So, my point is you're going to go through this popcorn analogy process with your child. There's mm -hmm. going to be some parents that are lucky to have kids that are going to be getting this down early. Mm -hmm. And hopefully the ones that get it down early don't end up being burnt at the end. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some that take a little bit and then all of a sudden pop to be the best kernel you can ever taste in your life. And then there's going to be some that don't pop at all. Yeah. Dang, that's and so you just got to, you, you just got to be realistic with your child and what their skill set is and not force them to do something that they're really not capable of doing. Mm -hmm. Gosh, it's made me think like, I can help all of those pieces of popcorn. <laughs> right, right. Like, I can help them when they pop early to maintain. Yeah. I can help the ones that are, you know, popping right on time, but still gonna like have that, that strong mindset. And then I can help the ones that don't pop because mm -hmm. even if you're not having the outcomes and results in softball or volleyball or basketball or whatever sport you're playing, like that doesn't like something that I, I, I like ingrain in these girls' minds is no matter what the outcomes or the results are, like you are still you and you like your value is not determined by the outcomes or the results that you have out on the field or the court. And there's they're all, they all have their own path and they all have their own journey and it's different from everyone else. Just like these popcorn girls. Dang, stuff. Oh my goodness. This has like been so 
amazing. And I'm like, I'm so glad that I've, we did this because there was just like some, I'm gonna have to go and rewatch this and take notes <laughs> because I'm gonna probably, I'm gonna probably share this with the rest of the public because it's just filled with so much good stuff. And um, BJ, your athletes and your families that come across your way are so blessed to have you in their life. And like, I, I'm just going to keep sending girls your way. I'm going to go to BJ, go to BJ, because yeah. you share like such powerful messages with these girls. And I think the one thing that keeps coming up for me is like, you're just empowering them to be the best versions of them and have the best swings possible. But it goes way beyond just that swing. Like we it, does. it so. does, it really does. So thank you so much for coming on and sharing and just chatting about how we make a powerful team and what, when you add the, when you have the mindset and the swing or the mindset and the physical skills and just, and two, just being open as a coach to keep learning yourself. And I think that's like a huge strength for that you have is you just continue to learn. And even though you're loud, you still soak things in <laughs> and you're observing and learning all the time. And I just think that that's what makes coaches so special. And um, these girls are just seriously so lucky to have you. So thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. Yeah. And I, Thank I you for like, having me. I really appreciate it have our next conversation because I've got so many ideas that we like I want to put into life with you so all part right two. let's get to part two, <laughs> yes, part two. <laughs> all right if you guys have um any questions for BJ or uh comments or you know I see some comments already down here but um uh, you guys, I'm going to uh, add BJ's contact information and not like, you know, his personal, you know, cell phone or something, but maybe he'll share that. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to give you guys uh, different ways to get in contact with BJ. If your daughter does play softball and wants a coach like BJ, you will, I'll, I'll, you'll be able to find him. I'll put it in the comments and uh, we'll be, we'll be sharing a little bit more of this so that you can reach him, talk to him get things started with him because he did not only just local here in Arizona, but he does um, uh, uh, online, oh my gosh, I can't Virtual talk. classes. Virtual, uh, <laughs> virtual <laughs> lessons. Uh, so anyone all over the country can have access to BJ, which is so cool. <laughs> yeah. All right, BJ. Um, I will talk to you soon. And I know you have lessons coming up because it's Christmas break and girls are ready to go. <laughs> they are ready to go. All right. We'll see All you right. later. See ya. Bye.